Hello and welcome. Today, we are going to explore a fascinating and incredibly useful circuit in the world of electronics, the summing amplifier. If you've ever wondered how different audio signals are mixed together, or how computers can perform mathematical operations using analog voltages, you're in the right place. We will start from the very beginning, assuming you have no prior knowledge. We'll look at the diagram, understand each component, and then walk through the mathematics step by step, translating every equation into simple, spoken language. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how a summing amplifier works. Let's begin by looking at the image on the screen. At the very top, we see the title, Summing Amplifier. This name tells us its main job, to sum, or add, things together. Below the title is the circuit diagram, labeled FIG, Summing Amplifier. Let's break it down piece by piece. The large triangle in the middle is the universal symbol for an operational amplifier, or op-amp for short. The op-amp is the active component, the engine of our circuit. Its job is to take in voltages and produce a new, amplified voltage at its output. The op-amp has two input terminals on its flat side. The one marked with a minus sign is called the inverting input. The one marked with a plus sign is the non-inverting input. The names simply describe how the output will react to a signal at that input. On the far left, we see our inputs. These are three separate voltage sources, labeled V1, V2, and V3. Think of these as three different signals we want to combine. Each of these input voltages is connected to the op-amp's inverting, or minus, input. But they don't connect directly. Each one passes through its own resistor. The voltage V1 is connected through a resistor labeled R1. The voltage V2 is connected through a resistor labeled R2. And the voltage V3 is connected through a resistor labeled R3. The small arrows labeled I1, I2, and I3 represent the flow of electric current from each voltage source, through its resistor, heading towards the op-amp. Now, let's look at the non-inverting, or plus, input of the op-amp. You can see it's connected to a symbol with three lines. This is the symbol for ground. In electronics, ground is our zero-volt reference point. Everything in the circuit is measured relative to this point. So, the plus input is being held steady at zero volts. This is a critical detail that we will come back to. Finally, look at the path from the output of the op-amp, which is the pointy end of the triangle. The output voltage is labeled VO. Notice there is a resistor, labeled or EFF, that connects this output all the way back to the inverting, or minus, input. This is called a feedback resistor. This feedback loop is what allows us to precisely control the op-amp's behavior. The current flowing through this feedback resistor is labeled with the letter I. So, to quickly recap the setup, we have three input signals, each with its own resistor, all feeding into the op-amp's minus input. The plus input is connected to ground. And a feedback resistor connects the output back to the minus input. On the right side of the image, there are several notes that summarize the purpose of this circuit. It's called a voltage adder, which is another name for a summing amplifier. The next note says, addition is performed by the summing amplifier. This confirms its function. A key insight is in the next box, variation of the inverting amplifier. A basic inverting amplifier has just one input. Our circuit is an expanded version of that, designed to handle multiple inputs. And the last note confirms this, can handle many inputs at the same time. Our diagram shows three, but we could have two, or four, or ten, just by adding more input paths. Now for the exciting part. Let's understand how this circuit adds voltages together by following the equations on the screen. The first principle we use is a fundamental law of physics called Kirchhoff's current law. It's a simple but powerful idea. The total amount of electrical current flowing into any single point in a circuit must be equal to the total amount of current flowing out of that same point. Let's apply this to the point where all our resistors meet. This point is the inverting input of the op-amp, which is labeled VI in the diagram. The currents I1, I2, and I3 are all flowing into this point. The current I is flowing out of this point, through the feedback resistor. Therefore, according to Kirchhoff's law, the outgoing current must equal the sum of the incoming currents. This gives us our first equation, which is written as 
the current I is equal to the current I1, plus the current I2, plus the current I3. Okay, that's the relationship between the currents. But what are the currents themselves? To find that, we use another fundamental law, Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the current flowing through a resistor is equal to the voltage difference from one side of the resistor to the other, divided by the resistance. Let's write this out for each of our four currents. First, the current I1. It flows through resistor R1. The voltage on the left is V1, and the voltage on the right is VI. So, the equation for I1 is I1 equals the voltage V1 minus the voltage VI, with the result divided by the resistance R1. Next, the current I2. It flows through resistor R2. The voltage difference is V2 minus VI. So, the equation is I2 equals the voltage V2 minus the voltage VI, with the result divided by the resistance R2. Similarly, for the current I3 through resistor R3, I3 equals the voltage V3 minus the voltage VI, with the result divided by the resistance R3. Finally, let's look at the feedback current, I. It flows through the feedback resistor, RF. The voltage on the left is VI, and the voltage on the right is the output, VO. So, the equation is the current I equals the voltage VI minus the output voltage VO, with the result divided by the resistance or EFF. Now we have an expression for every single current. We can now substitute all of these individual expressions back into our first equation from Kirchhoff's law. This gives us the long equation you see in the middle of the screen. Let's read it out loud. On the left side, representing the current I, we have the voltage VI minus the output voltage VO, divided by the resistance or EFF. This is equal to the sum of the other three currents on the right side. The voltage V1 minus VI, divided by R1, plus the voltage V2 minus VI, divided by R2, plus the voltage V3 minus VI, divided by R3. This equation looks very complex. But here is where the special properties of the op amp make everything incredibly simple. To analyze this circuit, we assume we are using an ideal op amp. An ideal op amp has two rules that we can call its golden rules. Golden rule number one, no current flows into the op amp's input terminals. This is why we could say that all the incoming currents, I1, 2, and 3, had to combine and flow out through the feedback path. Our first equation already uses this rule. Golden rule number two, the op amp will do whatever it takes with its output voltage, VO, to make the voltages at its two inputs equal to each other. This second rule is the key to everything. Let's look at our circuit again. The non-inverting, or plus, input is connected directly to ground. This means its voltage, which the diagram calls VB, is exactly zero volts. Because of golden rule number two, the op amp forces the voltage at the inverting, or minus, input to be the same. Therefore, the voltage VI must also be zero volts. This is a famous and powerful concept in op-amp circuits called virtual ground. The point VI isn't physically tied to ground, but the op-amp's action makes it behave exactly as if it were, holding it at a steady zero volts. As the note on the image says, for ideal op-amp, VI equals VB equals zero, since VB is connected to ground. Now, we can go back to our big, complicated equation and replace every single instance of VI with the number zero. Let's see what happens. Our equation becomes on the left side, zero minus the output voltage VO, divided by our EFF. And on the right side, V1 minus zero, divided by our one, plus V2 minus zero, divided by our two, plus V3 minus zero, divided by our three. Cleaning this up, the equation simplifies dramatically to the negative of VO divided by our EFF is equal to V1 divided by our 1 plus V2 divided by our 2 plus V3 divided by our 3. We are so close to our final answer. Our goal is to find a formula for the output voltage, VO. To get VO by itself, all we need to do is multiply both sides of this equation by negative our EFF. When we do that, we arrive at the final, elegant equation for the summing amplifier. The output voltage, VO, is equal to the negative of a large expression in parentheses. 
Inside the parentheses, we have the resistance or EFF divided by the resistance or 1 multiplied by the voltage V1 plus the resistance or EFF divided by the resistance or 2 multiplied by the voltage V2 plus the resistance or EFF divided by the resistance or 3 multiplied by the voltage V3. Let's take a moment to truly understand what this final formula is telling us. First, notice the negative sign out front. This means the output will always be the inverted, or opposite polarity, of the sum. If the sum of the inputs is positive, the output will be negative, and vice versa. This is because we are using the op amps inverting input. Now, look inside the parentheses. We are adding the input voltages, but not directly. Each input voltage is first multiplied by a factor. This factor is the ratio of the feedback resistor, or EFF, to that input specific resistor. This is why the final note on the image says, output voltage is a weighted sum of the inputs. The weight, or importance, of each input voltage is set by that ratio of resistors. By choosing the resistor values, we can control how much each input contributes to the final output. For example, if we wanted V1 to have twice as much impact as V2, we could make the resistor or one half the value of the resistor or two. Let's imagine the simplest case. What if we make all the resistors identical? Let's say R1, R2, R3, and the feedback resistor or EFF are all the same value. In that case, the ratio of our EFF divided by R1 is 1. The ratio of our EFF divided by R2 is also 1, and so on. The equation becomes much simpler. VO is equal to the negative of V1 plus V2 plus V3. In this special case, the circuit becomes a perfect inverting adder. It adds the input voltages together and then flips the sign of the result. If V1 was 1 volt, V2 was 2 volts, and V3 was 1 volt, the sum is 4 volts. The output, VO, would be negative 4 volts. So, there you have it. The summing amplifier is a powerful op amp circuit that produces an output voltage that is the inverted, weighted sum of its multiple inputs. We learned that it works because of two key principles, Kirchhoff's law, which tells us how the currents add up, and the concept of the virtual ground, which is created by the op amp's behavior and dramatically simplifies the math. By choosing our resistor values, we can precisely control how the inputs are added together, making this one of the most versatile and fundamental building blocks in all of analog electronics.